Hi everyone, welcome back to Introduction to Talmud Eser Asfirot Hagdama by Rav Yehuda Ashlag. Last time we spoke about emuna and different levels of emuna and how your emuna can really clear your eyes, clean your eyes, purify the way you see your life and the way you see the world. To art to see that the goodness already exists, the light is already there. You just have to clean the window a little bit. So we're here in Ot Yud Tet in Hagdemana Tamud Eses Firot number nineteen. There's a title over here in, in the print that I'm using. With the learning of the wisdom of Kabbalah, here literally the wisdom of truth, there's a better sgula, there's a better, I guess, tool you can use to bring the ma'or. The ma'or we talked about last time, the light, the luminary within the Torah that can bring you to the place where you need to be, to the place of goodness, to the place of light that already exists. You just need the, the ma'o, the luminary, the guide that can get you there. So we're on Ot Yutet. Now, everything we explained it till now. I can remove the complaint, that the very big complaint that they were uh, wondering about Rabbi Chaim Vital, who was the student of the Ariza Rabbi Yitzchak Luria. In his Hagdama, um, in Shal Hagdamot, in his introduction, Rabbi Chaim Vital's introduction, it's also in Sefer Etz Chaim, that, that introduction, and so now Rabbi Ashlag will quote Rabbi Chaim Vital. And so, Rabbi Chaim Vital, quote, he says here, a person shouldn't say, I will first go learn Kabbalah before I learn Torah and Mishnah and Talmud. We have two separate categories of two different types of Torah. We have Torah Hanigla, the revealed Torah, the Pshat, or you can say the Drushim, and the Remazim, the Gemara, the Mishnah, the Talmud, the, the, the Torah, the Tanakh. All of this is Torah Hanigla. But then there's Torah Tanista, which is the Zohar. Sefer Etz Chaim, works by the Arizal. And so that's Torah Tanistav. So a person shouldn't say, I'm first going to learn Kabbalah, and then I'll learn all the Torah and Mishnah and, and the simple Torah Nigle. Why? A person shouldn't go into the orchard, Pardes, only when his stomach is full with meat and wine. So Pardes, Literally means orchard, but Pardes also is Rashi Tevot. It stands for Peresh Dalet Samech Pshat Remez Drush and Sod. Four levels of Torah in uh, Judaism, which is Pshat, the simple, the simple level of Torah. Let's say the story of uh, Balak and Bilam. Uh, remez is different hints, or um, let's say Rashi, or uh, parts in the Talmud that are hinting to different things in the story that you wouldn't see otherwise. Then there's Drash, which is Midrash, stories or things that you would have to uh, Lidrosh, to, to, to ask or to take out of in the Gemara when there's a discussion you wouldn't know before, so you would have to ask about it. That's Drush. And then there's Sod. And then there's the secret. The secret level of Torah, which is Torah Tadistar, which is Kabbalah. So it says, according to the Chazal, according to the sages, a person shouldn't go and learn the entire pardes until his belly is full of wine and meat. Meat and wine. Here it's not literally meat and wine. We're, really, we know it's talking about learning the Torah Haniglet, the, the revealed Torah. If a person learns Kabbalah before he learns the simple Torah, Gemara, Mishnah, Torah, before he learns that and he, uh, and he just learns Kabbalah, it's like he has a soul without a body. There's no reward, there's no action, there's no calculation. It's just the soul. There's no uh, manifestation. It's just existing before it even uh, gets tied to the body and, and gets fixed with the 613 mitzvot and the learning of the Torah. 
So not only, so before we just jump into this quote, he's already telling us what the purpose or what the mission of life is. The soul should be connected to the body. When it becomes complete, mitukan b'mitzvat haTorah through the learning of the Torah, b'talyag mitzvot and the six hundred and thirteen mitzvot. And so too, so we say it's not just the problem that you learn Kabbalah and then you learn Torah, because it's like a soul without a body. But also the other way, if you just learn Torah by itself, Torah, Mishnah, Talmud, and not learn Kabbalah at all, v'chen behefer v'yoto osek bechumat hamishnah v'talmud bavli. And without learning Kabbalah and all the Sodot and, and the Zohar and the Ariza, without studying that, it's like a body that doesn't have a soul sitting in the dark. The soul is the, the candle, the, the, the light of Hashem. That shines within him. The body becomes dry without any... Um, uh, sustenance or um, suckling from a source of life. So what is the Sitre Torah? What is Sodot Torah? What is the level of Sod? What is Kabbalah? Kabbalah is the soul of the Torah. It's the source of life of the Torah. The Sod. The, it's the Pnimiut. It's the inner side. The inside of the Torah. It's the soul. Just like we have souls and bodies, the Torah also has a soul and a body. The body is the stories and the Gemara, and the Mishnah, and the soul is Kabbalah. The soul is the Zohar, the works of the Arizal. Be'ofen she'a talmid chacham, ha'usek p'tura lishma, a talmid chacham, a Torah scholar, who learns Torah for the right reasons, to give pleasure to the Creator, tzarich she'asuk mitchila b'chokhmat ha'meika v'amishnah v'atalmud. So what's the right way a talmid chacham, a Torah scholar, should learn? First, he should learn the Mikra, the Psukim, the Tanakh, then he should learn Mishnayot, the, the Mishnah, and then he should learn the Talmud, what his mind can handle. And afterwards, it doesn't end at the Talmud. It doesn't end at the Talmud. There's something after the Talmud. But we can't forget that we're supposed to learn Mikra, Mishnah, and Talmud. We're supposed to learn. That's how we start. After he finishes, and after his mind can't handle any more Mikra, Mishnah, and Talmud, then he can learn Yasok Ledad et Kono Bechuchpat Emet. He has to make himself busy and has to learn how to know his creator. He, has to, he wants to recognize and know who his creator is through the wisdom of truth, which is Kabbalah. It says in the Yamim, David the Melech commanded his son Shlomo, Know the God of your father and worship him. So what does it say? What's the first word? Da. You should know. Not ma'amin, even though emunah is something very powerful like we said last time. But there's also yidi'ah. It's called knowledge. How are you supposed to know about, his, about your creator if you only learn a certain part of Torah and not the rest? There's a part of Torah that is part. It's, it's, it's a whole pardes. How are you going to complete the Torah if you don't have that little piece? Not little. It's very big. So how are you going to know your creator? You have to learn about your Creator through the study of the wisdom of truth, which is Kabbalah. So let's say this person, he, he's really having a hard time with Talmud. He can't learn Talmud. It's very difficult for him to handle and grasp the ideas that are in the Talmud. So rather he should leave his hand from Talmud. After he already tried with this type of wisdom. And he should go to learn Kabbalah. A person, a student, it says in Masechet Chulin, A student who hasn't seen a good sign in his learning for five years, he won't see anymore. As in after five years, he has to give up. That's what it seems like he's saying. But every person who has it easy, as in it's easy for them to learn Talmud. It's not has it easy, it's easy for them to learn Talmud. It's easy for them to go into the ideas of the Talmud. And the iyun, the really asking the questions, the difficult questions that get deeper and deeper. And it's easy for him. What does he have to do? He's obligated. Give an hour or two, maybe even more. During the, in the day, for Iwun Here it just says an hour or two. He has to go into the, the 
questions, the deep questions of the halakha, to be conscious about and to answer the hakushyot, the hard questions, hanufrot bipshat halakha, that fall within the simple halakha, the simple law of, the, of Judaism. Adkan shunoh hakadosh shamila bimila. So Rav Asher is saying these are the words that he said, word for word, we just translated. So now we have a few questions Rav Asher wants to ask. Ot chaf, we're in 20. V'hine lechora, it seems, dvarav elu matmim od. It's very wondrous words. What is he saying over here? Before he's able to succeed in the learning of Torah, Nigla, the, the Torah, the Mishnah, and the Talmud, that he should go learn Kabbalah, it's the exact opposite of what he just said before. First, he said a person has to learn the Torah to Nigla, and then he can learn Torah to Nistar, and then he can learn Kabbalah. But now you're saying if he's not having success and he's not successful, he should leave Torah and Nigla and go learn Kabbalah. It seems like he's uh, contradicting himself. If you're learning just Kabbalah without any type of Nigla, it's like you're a soul without a body. It doesn't have any action, no calculations, no reward, no punishment. So it's, there's no manifestation. So how are you going to say that he should leave Torah Nigla? How are you going to say he should leave the Talmud and the, the Mikra and the Mishnah? What's the proof that he brings that he should leave? From a student who hasn't seen a good sign in five years. So this proof that he brings is even more wondrous. Did they say in the Gemara that a person should leave his Torah altogether and just go and, and stop learning? Of course not. No, rather it's to really look inside. What is he doing on his path? What should he be doing? Maybe to try a different rabbi, get a different teacher, find someone to help them on their path of Torah, or learn a different uh, a different topic. But for sure not to leave the Torah at all. And even if it's Torah to Nigla, he shouldn't leave it. It's not something you can just leave. So what does this mean that he's saying, let's quote, I just want to say what he says in the quote, How can it be that he just leaves his hand from Torah and Nigleh? What is going on here? Rav Ashlag is asking. Kaf Alef, we're in 21. So we have another question. So we have two questions so far. The first question, how can he say, it's, it seems like there's a contradiction in his words. The first one says, that a person should learn Torah Tenigla and then Torah Tenistal. And if he doesn't learn Torah Tenigla, it's like a soul without a body. And then the proof that he brings is the second question. How can you say that a person who hasn't seen a good sign for five years should leave Torah altogether? It can't be the case. Now the third question. And also in the words of the Mashmah Midibrahim, it seems like according to these words, According to this uh, language that they're using, is that when you get to a certain step, there's a certain mastery or graduation or excellence that you have to have in this area of Torah so that you can reach the wisdom or the intelligence of the Torah. But that's not true. How, how do we know it's not true? Because it says in Midrash Rabbah, on Parshat Vezot Abracha, Amar Kadosh Baruch Yisrael, the Creator said to the, to the Israelites, Chayechem, on your life, Kol HaChuchma V'Kol HaTorah Dabar Kalhu. Hashem is telling us, the Creator is telling us, this is something easy. It's very, very easy. What's easy? The wisdom and the Torah, it's very easy. What's, how, do we, how do we get it? How do we, how do we get this wisdom? What do we do? Kol mi shemitira'e oti ve'oseh divrei Torah, Anybody who fears me, has an awe for me, yira, which is an awe or a fear, or in between, and, and performs the mitzvot and learns Torah. The entire chokhmah, the all of the wisdom of the Torah, and all of the Torah is in his heart. This is what it says, You don't need any graduation or excellence or preparation to get to a certain level of chokhmah. So what's need? Elarak bezgulat yirat Hashem bekiyum mitzvot bilvad zochin lekol chumat Torah. You just need yira. You just need yirat Hashem and kiyum mitzvot. Just it's, it's a big just. You just need the awe and the kiyum mitzvot and fulfilling the mitzvot 
and then you can reach this Chokhmah. So why does it sound like Rabbi Chaim Vital is using this language that he has to have five years to make sure that he gets a good sign, that he's learning well, and he has graduation from that, maybe to go on to Chokhmah and So what's, what's going on here? So now we have three questions. So now we're, we're going to answer these questions. Chavbet 22. Achen. Therefore, im nasim lev zal. If we look to Rabbi Chaim Vital's words, they clear up as clear as day. When Rabbi Chaim Vita said that a person should leave his hand, he should take his hand away from that Torah after he already tried himself, he already tried to, to learn Torah Tanigle. When it said his mazal, he already tried his luck. It's not about luck of uh, that he really knows the Torah. It's not a type of Torah that... What is Rabbi Chaim Vital talking about? It's not a type of Torah that you know it, that you can repeat it ten times over without looking at the Sefer. It's the Torah that we talked about before. The Torah Tavlin, the spice, the antidote, the potion. To fight against the Yetzirah, to fight against the evil inclination. That's what Rabbi Chaim Vital is talking about. So now let's explain the entire idea. Like we explained before, what does it mean? He's trying, he's putting effort in learning Torah Tanigle, the revealed Torah, the evil inclination, the evil inclination is strong as ever. It's not helping. I'm learning all the Talmud I can, but it's not helping me. What am I supposed to do? He still has these thoughts of sinning or, or doing the wrong things. And he's going crazy. But he's still learning Torah. So how is he supposed to stop the Yetzirah? What's going on? How can I, what can I do? So, why, so what does Rabbi Chaim Vital say? What is the, the uh, Yehuts? What is the, uh, the advice that he gives us? That he should leave Torah Tanigle. He should leave Talmud or Mishnah or Mikra. And he should go to learning Kabbalah. In order to defeat the evil inclination, this is just to defeat the evil inclination, not just. To defeat the evil inclination, it's a different idea than to be baki, to be knowledgeable and uh, uh, excellent and having the right mindset and to know all the laws and all the ideas and all the questions and answers in your mind. There's a difference between intelligence, the Torah of intelligence, and the Torah of defeating your Yitzhakara, defeating your evil inclination. So to defeat your evil inclination, if you're having a hard time with the Talmud and Mishnah and the Mikra, and it's not helping you defeat your Yitzhakara, what should you do? You should go to the Chokhmat Kabbalah according to the Rabbi Chaim Bitad. Why? Because it's easier. It's easier to bring the luminary, the guide within the Torah, through learning Kabbalah. It's easier to do it with Kabbalah than with, when, than with Torah Tanigle, the revealed Torah. Why? So the reason is, it's very simple. The Talmud, the Mishnah, the Mikra, different stories in the Midrash, they're all Levushim, they're all enclosed in physical things. In the Gemara, we talk, there's talks a lot about stealing, theft, robbery, nezikin, damaging. If a person damages you, if you damage a person. All these laws that have physical ideas. It's very hard and heavy for a person to be mechaven, to be conscious about the fact and to put his heart to the fact that Hashem is... is with him, and this is his Torah, while he's learning about Gneva and Gzela, how is he supposed to remember about God? Because these topics are so physical, how is he supposed to remember and put his heart to something spiritual? And to think about that guide, that luminary within the Torah, to think about, I'm thinking about, I'm learning about Gneva and Gzela, but I want to make sure that the, the Torah that I'm learning is going to bring my, my guide, my, 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 my luminary, to bring me back to the light that I need to, that I need to see. So what, what is he supposed to do? 
it's hard for him to do that because he's so focused on the physicality of the inyan, the physicality of the, the argument within the Gemara, let's say. So he, according to Rabbi Chimvital, he's supposed to go and learn Torah, Chuchmat HaEmet, Kabbalah. Even more, even more so for a person. So it's not only when you're trying to defeat the Yetzirah, but it's also for a person who has a tough time with Gemara altogether. He can't really get the, the concepts in the Gemara, the Iyun, the, the depth of the, of the Talmud. So when it's hard for him to do that, it'll be even harder for him to think about the Ma'o Shabbat Torah because he can't get that deep. He can't think about the guy, the luminary that's supposed to bring him back to the life of goodness and also think about the, the depth of the Gemara, the depth of the Talmud. It's just very difficult. How is he supposed to remember that he's learning the Torah of Hashem while he's learning these deep topics? Because it's not just that it's hard for him to learn Gemara or Talmud, but it's also that these topics are physical. So he, it's, he, he can't focus on Hashem Barach and the Gemara at the same time. So what does this person do? Miatso. Rabbi Chaim Vital advises this person to learn Kabbalah, to go learn Kabbalah. Why? Because the levushim, the clothing, it's not physical in Kabbalah. The clothing, what's the clothing? As in the words that they use to teach the knowledge. That's clothing. The words that we're learning right now, that's, it's the clothing of the knowledge itself. The words enclose the knowledge and they go through the through the air and they get to your mind and you understand. So the words themselves are levushim. I don't want to say that that's for sure, but they're enclosing the knowledge. But with Kabbalah, there's in Chuchmat Kabbalah, when you're learning Kabbalah, everything has to do with the names of Hashem. Everything has to do with spiritual concepts. So when you're learning Kabbalah and you're learning about the different names of Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei, Alev Dalet Nun Yud, different names of Hashem, of course you can remember that you're, that you're learning Torah so that you can find the luminary to bring you back to the life that Hashem wants to give you because you're learning about your Creator. You're learning about the Creator. Even though the, the concept itself is hard to learn, Ravash is telling us that when you're learning these topics of Kabbalah, of Zohar, the study of the Arizal, Talmud Eser Asfirot, this is the introduction to Talmud Eser Asfirot. When you're learning this type of Iyun, when you're learning, why does he call it Talmud Eser Asfirot? Talmud Bavli, Talmud Yerushalmi, visit Talmud Eser Asfirot. This is the Kabbalah. This is the inner part of the Torah. It is when you're going into the depth of these topics, because the depth in learning this topic and Hashem Himself, as in the Creator Himself, that this knowledge and the Creator, Him Echad, they're one. And this is very simple. If you want, you can look in Ma'amre HaSulam, in the section that's called The Wisdom of Kabbalah. What is the Wisdom of Kabbalah? That's what it's named. I have a footnote here. We're up to 23. So therefore, so now we know why. Rabbi Chim Vital says a person should go learn Kabbalah. It's because it's not, he's not talking about having intelligence. He's talking about defeating his evil inclination. So that's why he brings the proof. That's why he brings the very good proof. It, it fits. From the Gemara. If a person, excuse me, hasn't seen a good sign in his learning. For five years, he won't see. He won't see in the future. Why didn't he see a good sign, according to Rav Ashlag, after he finishes the quote? He hasn't seen a good sign in his learning because he hasn't been putting his heart or been conscious about the fact that he's learning so the Ma'ol Shabbat Mutav. It's not because he's having a hard time with the learning, but because he hasn't been putting his consciousness, his kavanah, his meditation about the Torah. There's no, you, you're not, it's not about being fit or being the right person to learn Torah. 
Any person could say, oh, it's not for me. Torah is not for me. I can't, I can't learn Gemara, or I can't learn Kabbalah, or I can't learn Mishnah, I can't learn Tanakh. It's not, it's not for me. No person could say that. Why? How do we know? We already said the proof. Like it says in the Midrash. This thing that's called the Torah, it's very easy. Why? Hashem, the Creator, is telling us, everyone who fears me and has awe in me, and does the, the Torah and performs the mitzvot, the entire Torah is in your heart. As long as what? You have the ira. You have to have the awe. You have to have the hagdarot. You have to have the limitations and the boundaries, the discipline and the fear of the Creator and to also do the mitzvot. So it's not about being fit. Every person can learn the Torah. Every person can learn different levels of Torah. It's about where is your kavana? Where what, what are you thinking about when you're learning? What are you thinking about when you're when you're staring at a page of Gemara? Is it just something physical? When you're reading the story of Bilam, is it just a story with a talking donkey? Go watch Shrek. This is the same thing. It's not a story. There's sod behind it. This is the Torah of the Creator. So there must be something in it that I don't see. That's what learning Kabbalah is about. What's inside? What's behind this clothing? What's behind this story? It can't just be just a story. So that's why Rabbi Chaim Vital says to go learn Kabbalah. The thing is, it takes time to get used to, to have hergel, to get used to the fact that the ma'ol, the, the luminary within the Torah and the mitzvot are bringing him back. But I don't know how, how long it's going to take. And a person really he can wait his entire life. He says his entire 70 years here. Which is why in Masechet Chulin it warns us We don't know how long it's going to take. What's it going to take? We don't know how long it's going to take for us to become Yare'e To become people who have Yira. And to get used to the fact that the Ma'ol Shabbat is bringing you back to the Muktaf. We don't know how long it takes for the Ma'ol to bring you back, to bring you to the good place. Which is why there's a limit. What's the limit? Three or five years, according to this Braita that we just brushed. So saying, how do we know? How long does it take for a person to get to from Torah to Niglet, Torah to Nistar? To go from not really knowing if he's going on the right path to knowing that this is the path that he should be taking. We don't know. That's what Rabbi Shaka is saying. Eni yudea kama. I don't know how long. But the Barata tells us there's a discussion, there's a machloket, there's an argument between the Tanakama, which says you should wait five years, and Rabbi Yosef, which says you should wait three years. Why? That's the amount of time that he will know he will if he'll get the Chuchmat Torah. And he shouldn't wait longer than that. I'm going to translate. Lo With false hope or disappointment. He's never going to see a good sign again. As soon as those three or five years are up, he should find a strategy. What's the strategy he's going to take so that he can get to the path of Torah, so that he can get to the path that he needs to be on, so that he can get to the path where the Ma'ol, where the luminary, the guy that he can find and bring him back to Mutav, to the good life. So that what's the goal? To get to a Torah, to learning Torah, to doing mitzvot, lishma, for the sake of giving pleasure to the Creator. That's the goal, that's the end purpose, that's the last thing you should do. It's not to stay in Shilo Lishma, it's Bitok uh, Shilo Lishma, Ba Lishma. While he's not Lishma, he, he can come to Lishma. So how is he going to get there? Well, once three or five years are up and you tried everything you could in those three or five years, then you have to come up with a strategy. The Brayta didn't tell you what to do after those three or five years. It just warns you. Don't wait. Don't sit around and continue what you're doing if you haven't seen any good signs. If you are staying in what you're doing or you're staying in the state that you're in and you're not changing, there is no next. 
that that's where you're going to be. If you don't make the change yourself, you you won't improve. You won't get further. That's why Rabbi Chaim Vital says, The strategy that is successful and most secure that he should choose, he should learn Kabbalah. And you should leave Torah Nigle altogether. He says, altogether. He tried getting to Lishma in Gemara, in Mikra, in Mishnah. And he, he wasn't successful. We then call Zmano, give all of his time. Because Kabbalah, the learning of Kabbalah and the wisdom of Kabbalah is something that is for sure going to help you get successful. Like we explained before, because the Levushim, the words, the ideas, the concepts are all about spiritual terms. Excuse me. And so when you learn and you have these spiritual terms as part of the vocabulary, as part of the language of the Torah that you're learning, then it's so easy to remember that the Ma'ol Sheba Torah is existent in this Torah, and that's what my goal is. I want to use this Torah that I'm learning right now, but you can't remember that when you're learning Tamud. That's why three to five years, three to five years, see where you are after three to five years, after those three to five years are up, find a new strategy. Try to find, you have to find a new strategy. Why? Because the Yetzirah is very, very smart. Zaken, he's known as the Zaken, he's known as an old person. Why? Because every person is born with an evil inclination. When a person gets to 12 for girls, 13 to, for, for men, for boys, it's different. So what happens in 12 or 13? They get Yetzirah they get the, the good inclination. So what does that mean? That when they were born, they were already born with an evil inclination. Which means he's older, he's wiser, he knows the person. So you have to come up with strategies to defeat this wise old man who wants just, just for you to fail. You don't see it, but he wants you to fail. So what are you going to do? How are you going to make yourself successful? How are you going to defeat the evil inclination? Are you going to change your ways or are you just going to stay where you are and let him win? What are you going to do about it? That's, that's what Rav Ashak and Rabbi Chaimaitra is telling us is that if you already see that nothing has happened, I'm going to quote it again because it's, it's just so powerful. The Brite didn't bring a, a tachbura, didn't bring a strategy. It only warns us. The only warning we get, you shouldn't sit in the same situation. Do not wait. This is your call. This is it. This is the sign that you were waiting for. This is it. It's, it's time to move. It's time to change. Kavdal, we're in 24. And this is very simple. It has nothing to do with learning of Torah of Nigle, which is Talmud, Mishnah, and Mikra. The, the Torah Nigle, it's not, it has nothing to do with the learning of Torah Nigle and knowing the halakha l'ma'aseh, knowing the halakha that you're supposed to be doing. Because in Am Ha'aretz is not a chasid. It says, that a person who doesn't know Torah is not compared to a person who does. V'shkagat Talmud ole Zadon v'chotei echai ya'avid tova harbe alken mechuyav v'echech l'achzor lehem ad kama sh'yaspik lo sh'lo yikashe l'ma'ase I am very sorry. I, I'm very confused by this paragraph. I'm going to continue and then we'll go back to it. Ela kol mudbar kanu rak be'iyun b'chumat Torah what it seems like Rav is saying is that we have, it's not talking about people, it's not talking about refusing to learn halakha l'ma'aseh or refusing to learn So it's saying, it doesn't mean you're not supposed to learn halakha not. It doesn't mean you should stop keeping Shabbat, you should stop keeping kosher, you should only go spiritual, that's it, you should go to the far end of the spectrum. I don't want to pray right now, I don't feel like it. My soul is not ready for prayer. No, halakha. Halakha says you have to have yira. You have to have the, the mitzvot. You have to keep the mitzvot still. So what are we talking about? Kolom edubarka. What are we talking about? Hurag bi'iyun b'chumat Torah niglet l'kaven v'letaretz ha'kushot anuflot b'pshay halachot k'mo sh'mesik sham harib chayim v'ital ba'atzmo. What we're talking about is the Torah niglet 
What part of the Torah Niglet? It's the part where you're answering different questions that are the simple part of halacha. It's not the, the part of the halacha, let's say, what type of uh, foods you're allowed to eat and what you're not allowed to eat. Or discussions about... It doesn't have examples here, but discussions about, let's say, one thing about cooking on Shabbat, let's say. Halakha about that. Halakha le ma'aseh. So halakha le ma'aseh is action. So halakha that refers to action. It's not about that. It's the simple halakha. Kmo she masik sham ho chim nimatzmo. Dainu chelik alimud she betura she ena ba'a leklal ma'aseh. It's the type of halakha. What is Rabbi Chaim Vital talking about? The Torah that he should be leaving. It's the type of halakha that has nothing to do with action. It has nothing to do with halakha that you would use every day. You can learn in short terms. You don't have to learn the entire thing. And this is also you need a lot of iyun. Because you don't know the entire thing. Ah, so the basic idea of chaf. Dalit is saying that even though we just said that you should leave the Torah Tinigle and go to Torah Kabbalah, it doesn't mean that you should leave it all together and just not keep the mitzvot. Because you need the halacha, you need the mitzvot, you need different things that you would use in your daily life to remain a, a religious or a person who keeps the mitzvot. You still need that type of Torah. It doesn't mean that you should leave that Torah. You should still keep the mitzvot. You should still keep the halachot. But you should learn, the learning that you should be doing should be in the Torah the Kabbalah. I'm going to do two more and then we'll finish. So now we see If you remember, the first class we ever did, we had five questions, five doubts that a person could bring why you should not learn Kabbalah. So now he's going to say, now he's going back after 25 Sifim. These doubts that we brought up, they're totally nonsense. Hamachmorim, Mitsudot, Poresh Yetzara. The Yetzara of the evil connection is bringing you these doubts. Let's soon have a shot to hunt uh, innocent souls. Kedele Tordan me Olam Blichemda. To make sure that they suffer in this world. Binireta Kusha Rishon, the first question, the first doubt that we brought, Shemedamim, et at Swam Shei Cholin, the Kayim Kolatora Kula Gambli Yat Hukdwala. The first doubt we brought, if you remember, is that a person could say, maybe I can just do the entire Torah. I can fulfill the entire Torah without learning Kabbalah. Why do I need Kabbalah? I don't need Kabbalah. I can do the entire Torah without it. Rav Ashtag says to them, Ad It's the opposite. If you're able to do the entire Limud Torah, the learning of Torah, and the fulfillment of the Mitzvot, like it's supposed to be, for giving pleasure to the Creator, and only for that reason, then, of course you don't need Kabbalah. If you're able even to do that in the first place, to fulfill the entire Torah, Lishma, for the right reason, you don't need Kabbalah. Ki az lechem, because about that person, it says, Nishma tadam tilabdenu. The soul of the person will teach us. Ki az mitgalim lechem kol razi Torah. The, the secrets of the Torah are already revealed to you. Ki ma'ayana mitgaber. Ki divrei rabbi me'er blish yitzchhu siwu me'asfarim. You don't need any sfarim to learn about these secrets if you're actually, if you're really for real, in your honest heart, really fulfilling the entire Torah, all 613 mitzvot, learning the Torah, lishma for the sake of giving pleasure to the Creator, and no to'elet la'atzmecha, and no reward for yourself. But if you're still standing in a place where you're not doing it for the right reasons, but you really hope that through the learning that you're doing, you'll eventually reach the right reason. So now I have to ask you, if you think that you can fulfill the entire Torah without Kabbalah and you're still in Lolishma, you're still in this in in it for yourself, how long have you been studying? According to the Tanakama, if you've already been doing five years, according to Rabbi Yossi, it's the three years. If you're still within those three to five years, you still have time. But if it already passed, that you're already learning Torah, you're learning Torah for the wrong reasons, already for three or five years, the Brayta is warning you. 
שלא תראו סימן יפה עוד בדרך הזה שאתם דורכים. The path that you're going on is going to keep you there. It's not going to change. ולמה לכם להשלות נפשכם בתקוות שווא? Why would you keep yourself with false hope? בשעה שיש לכם תחבולה כל כך קרובה ובטוחה כמו הלימוד של חוכמת הקבלה? The strategy that is, חוכמת הקבלה is so close, it's so secure. כמו שהוכחתי אתם לעד רק אקספלין בפועל להיות העיון בנושא החמרה דבר אחד עם השמת ברך עצמו. The learning of the חוכמת הקבלה is one and is united with השם יתברך, with the creator, עיין היטב לאל. And look before it עוד כף בית. So now he's saying to the person who thinks that he can fulfill the entire Torah, but he's been learning לא לשמה. How long has he been learning? You only have three to five years to check if you're learning לא לשמה and not learning Torah תניסתר. You're three to five years. That's the limit. After that, check yourself. What is your strategy? How are you going to defeat the Yitzhar Allah? How are you going to get to the path of Lishma for the right reasons? Chavav, the last Se'if, and then we'll stop here. Bechen nemashish takushi ha'shniya. Well, now we'll address the second doubt, the second doubt in the beginning. Bema shakatuv shitzichim t'chila leman ot kisam b'sha'as poskim. People say that you're not supposed to learn Kabbalah until you fill your belly with Shas, with uh, Shnei... Uh, שישה סדרי משנה and all of Talmud and all of הלכה הנה בוודאי הוא it's true you have to do that שכן הוא לדברי הכל that's how you're supposed to do it אמנם ודאי שכל זה אמור but that's only what it's talking about אם כבר זכיתם ללמוד לשמה if you already fulfilled the Torah you already fulfilled the learning of לשמה that your learning has already become something that's not for your own sake but for giving pleasure to the creator או אפילו שלא לשמה Or even if it's not Lishma, אם אתם עומדים בתוך גימל השנים, if you're within the three to five years, then you're still covered. מה שאין כן אחר הזמן ההוא, if you're after those three to five years, and you're still in Lishma, הרי הברית המזהירה אתכם, the bright is also warning you, שלא תראו עוד סימן יפה לעולם, you're not going to see a good sign forever. כמו שנדבר, like we just said, ואם כן מוכרחים אתם לנסות אצלכם בלימוד הקבלה. That's why you have to try לימוד קבלה. We're going to end here, but I just want to summarize. You have a limit. You have to decide, are you going to make a change? What are you going to do that's going to improve your life? How are you going to defeat that evil inclination? Are you going to let him ruin your life? It's not his life, it's your life. You were brought here to do something. You have to find what that purpose is, and you have to find how you can get to the path of lishma, the path of giving pleasure to the Creator. But you have a limit. Don't forget. אל תחכה. אני פשוט רוצה לומר את זה עוד פעם, אני מצטער, זה כל כך טוב. אלא שמזהירה, אלא שמזהירה, דברייטה וורנזו, שלא יושב באותו המצב, do not sit in the same situation, ויחכה עוד, and do not wait any longer. It's time to go. So with this, I hope we can all move forward with our paths in life, and uh, thank you so much for watching. All the best.